Hey guys, right before I get into this video, I want to remind you guys about the huge giveaway that I'm doing with Little Mystic 7 who's another YouTuber. And all you have to do to enter this giveaway is first, like this video, then subscribe and turn on notifications, then click the first link in the description to enter yourself into the giveaway. After you're done all that, comment down below saying you did everything and you're going to be entered. Good luck to all of you and let's get right into the video. Hey guys, it's Bibi Kendall here from Past Use By and welcome to a brand new Clash of Clans video. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the top 10 most annoying types of people in Clash of Clans. Now if you've been a long time fan of the channel, uh, way back in the day I actually made a video on the same exact topic. Uh, however, it really didn't come out that good, the audio quality was terrible, I could literally like hear people talking in the background because believe it or not, I made that video in the car. Um, and uh, it was just really bad and that was back then you know when I didn't have that good quality or any good mindset or anything but now I think I've improved and I want to do a remake of that video uh, once and for all and it's gonna be the same content uh, but yeah hope you guys enjoy this video but right before I get into this one though make sure to go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you have not already for the latest Clash of Clans updates news announcements and strategy and uh, yeah without further ado Let's go ahead and talk about the most annoying types of people in Clash of Clans. So the first one, uh, this one's a big pet peeve for me, is the people who pretend to be these big YouTubers like Chief Pad or Galadon or Molt, and uh, they like are in the global chat or they join your clan or something, and their name is uh, trying to imitate one of these famous people and it's pretty obvious that they aren't the actual person you know they maybe like spell their name wrong so people who try to imitate chief pat they spell it like chief uh, they spell it with the e before the i or they even forget the i altogether to make it like chef pat which i think is pretty funny and it's so obvious that they're not the real deal they're english sometimes a little bit shaky uh, but these people are you know trying to press it they're like hey um you know I i'm the real deal uh, you're getting to know me right now. Uh, this is amazing um, And some people fall for it, which I, I guess they're dumb But I definitely don't fall for it and I find it sort of annoying that these people are trying to pretend to be these famous people when it's pretty obvious that they're not Okay, so number two is the people who don't read your clan description and they clearly uh, even though they know they aren't qualified to join uh, they still do request to join your clan so this is so annoying uh, when i used to lead a clan pass use by uh, that was a long time ago actually but we'd get people requesting to join the clan and they're like tunnel fours or tunnel fives and they know that or i don't know if they know but we know that they can't make it and specifically in our clan description it says something like town hall nine and above only with 2020 heroes uh, stuff like that and then you got these random like low town hall levels trying to join the clan and it's just an instant reject uh, from one of our elders or cold leaders and but I don't know what these people are trying to like I don't know if they think they can get in I don't know what's their deal but they're just trying to request the clan when apparently they cannot read a clan description which makes it super clear about our requirements and I find that uh, pretty annoying okay let's move on to number three uh, the clan hoppers these guys are the guys who just leave your clan after you lose a war or they like rage quit and leave After they fail one war attack in your clan and this happens so much in my experience uh, So some guy would join the clan right and he's pretty good. So we're like welcome You know we spend a lot of time uh, getting to know him uh, We donate him a lot of troops. We uh, get him all prepped up for the war and then like two wars later they leave the clan and usually it's because either we just lost a war and they think that we're like up to no good or something and they just leave or they like fail one war attack and they just completely lose it they rage quit and they just leave the clan now this is so annoying because we're spending so much time with them and donating all these troops and everything and they just bail on us uh where is that long-term commitment you know if you're gonna join a clan and request troops and all that stuff might as well have some commitment to the clan show that even if you lose one war it doesn't mean the end of the clan even if you fail one war attack it doesn't mean we're gonna kick you you gotta build that long-term relationship and these clan hoppers who are going all around uh joining different clans and trying to find the best one it really won't work out for them in the end okay so yeah let's go ahead and move on to the next one on this list number four 
Uh, this one's really simple and I really don't want to get into the details of this one, but uh, basically the people who troll on global chat, uh, you don't really see it that much anymore, at least I haven't, but back in the day, uh, there just used to be so many people on global chat who would uh, just try to troll. Um, either they'd be those types of people who are like, you know, hey, I, I need a girlfriend or something like that. Or these people are like, hey, you know, how's my base? And they're rushed, but then they don't admit that they're rushed. And all this crazy stuff that I really just get tired of. Uh, I just really avoid global chat at all costs, pretty much. Um, and recently, I have sort of been making my way a little bit back, and it hasn't been happening that much, which is a good thing. But yeah, it's going to be number four. Okay, so number five is the people who ask for a co or elder uh, as soon as they join your clan. And this, this is so annoying because uh, everyone knows that these positions are to be deserved. Uh, you don't just give out free elder, free co-leader. I know some clans do that, and I don't really like that policy. But when someone joins my clan, I expect them to behave. I expect them to earn these higher positions of co-leader and elder, not immediately get it as like, you know, a free gift or something. Because elder is a huge responsibility. You have the uh, capability to kick people out. You can invite people in. And I really only want the really trusted members to have elder and to eventually have co-leader. And these guys who are asking, especially if they like, keep asking over and over again, even though I say no or something like that, they just keep asking like every couple hours. It just really gets on my nerves. Um, so yeah. Okay, number six is the people who think that they have an anti three star base when it's either extremely out of meta or they are below Town Hall 8. Now, this is literally the most annoying thing in the world. Okay, so back when I was leading a clan, right? I was like, so someone joins my clan and I'm like, all right, can I see your war base? Uh, make sure it's an anti three star base, blah, 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 blah. And then they show me their war base and it's like, an internet base and i'm just like what the heck are you doing it's like uh, if you guys know the triton base people use that so much people just use these anti two star bases and i'm like hey this is not anti three star can you show me an anti three star base and they're like no it's no, this is anti three star you know all the town hall is not centralized so that automatically means that this is an anti three star base there's double giant bond spots so that automatically means that this is an anti three star base Oh, so annoying guys um and then there's the people who are like tunnel six and they claim they have an anti three star base like really that that doesn't work that way you can't have an anti three star tunnel six base because it's way too easy to three star at tunnel six it doesn't really make any sense at all but yeah that's gonna be super annoying uh yeah okay number seven is the people who create a clan with the same name of a popular clan. So for example, the people who try to copy like One Hive or something, or the people who try to copy Barbarian Party, um, it's pretty obvious they're not the real thing sometimes. Like they don't use the same capital letters and stuff like that. But I don't know what they're trying to pull off and it just makes it super annoying when I'm trying to search up a clan and like 10 million results pop up. I have to scroll through each one if I don't know the clan tag. And if it's like the first time I'm searching up the clan, it takes forever. It's just so frustrating. And um, these guys, I don't know what they're trying to fool. Like, they're not fooling anyone, I hope. Um, but yeah. All right. Number eight. The people who judge how good you are at the game based on your league. Uh, this is a little bit of a pet peeve for me as well. So, you know, let's say I'm in gold league. I'm just farming. You know, I'm farming up my uh, Town 9 account, my walls or whatever. There's pretty good loot down there, actually. And then there's like some Town Hall 7 who happens to be in Crystal League. And people automatically assume that the person with the higher amount of trophies is automatically like somehow better at the game. That's just not true. Uh, trophy pushing is more of a time commitment than a skill commitment, especially if you're going up really high. And if I'm just farming down there, like that doesn't really show anything. I'm probably still better than that Tunnel 7 who's like a couple hundred trophies above me. But uh, yet these people are like automatically assuming uh, based on your league or trophy count, that's how good you are at the game. That's just not true. Okay, uh, almost at the end of this one, number nine, the people who don't listen to donation requests. And oh my goodness, uh, <laughs> this is so annoying. Uh, you got these people, you know, who donate me random stuff, 
when I specifically request for a certain troop or a certain spell, they just don't give me the most random things, like not even something else that's similar that could be helpful as well. I mean, I still not like that, but it's not that bad, right? So let's say I request for a golem, they give me like goblins and like barbarians, like this is the most random troops in the world. And I, am, I just get so annoyed with these people. Like, why not listen to donation requests? It's right there. If you don't have the troops, just don't donate. It's as simple as that, but these people apparently do not understand that. Okay, let's move on to the very last one of this video. Number 10, the people who always have excuses for missing war attacks. Um, and this is extremely annoying. Uh, like, if you miss a war attack and you have an honest excuse, like, okay, that's fine. But if it, every war you, like, miss one or two attacks and you always blame it on something, one day it's your Wi-Fi connection was bad, another day is you're on vacation, another day is you were at the doctor's and you couldn't get your attack in, every single time is always happening. Now, this is annoying because, first of all, they've opted into wars. So if you're opted into wars, it means you are not expecting anything to happen during that two days so that you can attack twice during the war. Now, I understand emergencies, and that's okay. Everyone gets them at some point. But if every single war you get an emergency, that sort of makes it suspicious, and it makes it feel like that you might be lying uh, just to bring off some excuses about missing your war attacks. Now, uh, that's why it's annoying. If they're opted out, you know, it's fine. If someone's opted out for a really long time, they have a valid excuse. Maybe they're on a trip uh, to a place with no Wi-Fi. That's fine. But if you're going to be opted in, you better make sure that 90% of the time you will make those war attacks in. And uh, when people don't, it just gets annoying. All right, so that's going to be wrapping it up for this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And definitely for any of these 10 things that I just said, if you shared the same feeling, uh, the same annoyance towards these types of people please go ahead and comment that down below i'd love to hear you guys' thoughts on this and also comment down below uh, any other types of people that you find annoying in clash of clans uh, before i end this video i just wanted to say this video was not really meant to offend anyone sorry if like if you actually do one of these things i don't know why you're watching my video but this wasn't really meant to call anyone out more just generic uh annoyance towards these types of people not a specific person so hope you guys understand that and yeah like this video if you did enjoy it and subscribe for more clash of clans content until next time i'll see you guys later peace out